do you view him strictly as do you see him moving around more maybe than he did in the past or will he strictly be playing uh, was it the s will that he was at yeah will well we moved him around a little bit even last year yeah. you know i mean he's a versatile guy um Look, I mean, our responsibility when we come out of the first couple weeks of training camp is really find out, you know, who we have. Yeah. You know, we, we, I mean, this version, you know, the 2023 version of our guys, who they are, um, what unique skills that they have. And then in special situations, you know, whether it's an obvious passing down or whatever, how can we utilize our, our guys the best way to, you know, to maximize their skills. So Abdul is certainly a guy that has some versatility. But you don't want it to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You know, I think it's important still to be great at one thing. And, and one of the things that's been a message for many of our players on defense is, you know, there's nothing like in baseball. Having a great fastball makes you a dominant pitcher. You don't need 13 pitches when you've got a dominant fastball. You need a dominant fastball and a good changeup to be a great pitcher. Uh, and let's make sure we're working on our fastball because usually – to, to go one and know every week, which is the goal in this program, that has a lot more to do with your fastball than it does, you know, with your third or third or fourth pitch. So in that sense, what is Abdul's fastball? Well, what you can see is you can see his short area quickness. So whether that's in his ability to, um, you know, make plays in the run game inside the box, uh, whether that's rushing the passer, as we saw a year ago, chasing down quarterbacks, he's got great acceleration, start, stop. Um, you know, and then obviously physically, you know, he's long, he's got great length, so he can finish plays. Um, so, I, you know, and I, I think he also has a great sense of confidence in himself when he's on the field. I mean, I think he has great belief in his abilities when he's out there. So uh, being able to hone those things in with the understanding of what's going on around him. You know, I always call it like the matrix moment when that game slows down and start seeing the little zeros and ones, you know, floating in space. That's when you really have that moment. And um, you begin to realize you actually don't have to do things really with a cape on it. You know, the game becomes slower and becomes much more simple, which with a guy with his short area quickness, it, it, will, it will become even scarier. Chuck was telling us how Rojas came in at 195 and he's like 230 now. Um, how important was that for him to, to add weight like that? And what did the spring mean to him? You had a couple guys who weren't able to do a lot, and it seemed like he got a lot, a lot of reps. He did. He and Tamir were both able to play a lot this spring, which is what you want when guys come in mid-year. The weight thing never bothered us. We knew he would put on weight. You know, but that's pretty this fast. Guy. Yeah, but he just but he had the body type to do it. And, and, and in high school, he ran, 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 ran all the time. Played basketball in high school, and um, you know, played both sides of the ball. And he's just moving and moving and moving. And you know, and that's why when you're recruiting, you're looking at body frames. You know, because you you get an idea of what they can become. So with Tony, yeah, I mean, I don't know if we knew it would happen in, in three months' time, but we knew that he would be exactly the size we want. Um, proud of him. Proud of the way he played in the spring game. You know, he, I think he's picked up the defense pretty well. He's a bright kid, um, and he loves to play. And, and again, I mean, I, I thought on his high school tape, I thought he was as good as anybody in the country, and we're, we're very blessed to have him. Tim did a lot of things for you guys on the field last year in the Prowler package. How important is it to, you know, find someone who can, you know, fill that role in that – scheme and also who do you think could potentially fill that role? Well, now that they've seen it and they see what he did, they, 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 they want to be him. Um, and I don't know if that's a one-for-one one swap. I don't know if we'll have one guy that can be him because he was so unique, he was so special. Um, but we had a guy this spring who had a sack, I think, in spring, who basically mirrored the move that Tig used in, in, the, in the Rose Bowl game. So it's like once they see how a blitz is, you know, Tig kind of showed them all how to do it, and so now they have a visual image of how to do it. So that helps us, you know. We didn't have that at this time a year ago. Um, I think the bigger thing with a guy like Tig is his leadership. I mean, he, this is a rare player that when he spoke, everyone in the locker room stopped and turned to, to look to hear what he was saying. Um, do we have that guy right now? I don't know that we do, you know, and uh, that's why I say these summer workouts is a lot of times is where that is forged. Um, we weren't talking about taking that way this time last year. You know, that's, that's a thing that develops over the course of a team. That's why I always say every team is kind of different than the year before. So we do need someone to step up and, and assume that role uh, from a leadership standpoint and then certainly his versatility on third down. What is Dan Connor bringing to your defense and with his experience and really just kind of defining his role? What, what is he doing for you guys? Yeah, you know, we're obviously we have some limitations in terms of the NCAA rules and what he's allowed to do from a coaching standpoint. But, but his presence, um, you know, I think for our linebackers in that room to be able to have a guy sitting there who's sat in those same seats, had the success that he's had, and to be able to understand process, 
you know, whether it was when he was at Penn State or it was his uh, successful career in the National Football League, of how to study, how to prepare, how to about go about things. You know what I mean? And maybe sometimes just how to deal with the stresses of, of, of the entire workload and the environment. You know, you just, you know, it, it's to have such a resource like that in the room, I think it's so valuable. He's super um, helpful to me in terms of preparing our guys uh, for the game with whether it's, you know, um, you know, paperwork or different types of videos and whatnot. And uh, so, again, a, 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 a guy who has been an outstanding asset for Penn State for a long time and is still helping us a lot of ways right now. Um, how would you describe Abdul Carter's competitiveness? He's a highly competitive guy. We've got some guys, you know, in his class that are that are of the same cloth that they, they do not like to lose. Um, they want to be great. Um, and to Abdul's credit, you know, and guys that want that, they need to be pushed to be great. And that's kind of, you know, it's okay. This is what you want. Here's how it goes. Um, and so I, I don't think Abdul came here to be mediocre in anything. And I, I don't think he came here to be part of a mediocre team in any way, shape, or form. So, and I think it stands to reason that the more he played a year ago, the better that we played. I think he helped raise our level of play. And um, now, as I said, you know, now on to year two, you know, I just, I just told him not 30 minutes ago, you know, what you did a year ago isn't good enough anymore. There's got to be some sort of development and improvement. Otherwise, we're just settling for what was. And, um, and I don't think Abdul wants to do that.